Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Hoyman Tree Saws, Lone Wolf Tree Stands, Nikon, Ozonix, Redneck Blinds, RTP Outdoors, Spot Hog Releases, Wasp Archery, Viking Solutions, and Realtree. Day 2, October 6th. It's another nice cool day. Uh, I think the temperature today is probably low to mid 50s. North wind, about uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And I'm going to hunt closer to the house this evening. Uh, last time I was out a couple nights ago, I was on what I thought was the south end of the range of this buck I'm calling the Big Seven. And now I'm right what I would call that deer's core area or closer to the middle of his range. I think he's living just to the west, uh, just to the east of our house. And uh, that's where we found the sheds from the deer last year. That's where I've been getting a lot of daylight pictures of him on my trail cameras. But also there's a spot uh, just to the west of the house where he's been showing up. It works a little bit better for today. I mean, we it was rainy all day and I really should have got in and put a tree stand up and hunted him just a little bit differently, maybe a little bit more aggressively. But I thought it was going to be raining and I didn't want to be outdoors with this camera gear uh, and have it be coming down rain. So uh, I, I put it in my head we were going to hunt the redneck blind. So that's where we're going. Uh, I, again, I don't know this deer super well, but if I had to guess, I'd say that we're not going to be right where this deer lives. He's going to have to come to us, I think, this evening, which he could well do. Uh, so it's a good spot. I mean, it's a fun spot to hunt. It's real close to the house. The biggest challenge we've got really is getting past Duke so he doesn't follow us down to the blind. Uh, if I can get past Duke, killing a big deer shouldn't be any problem. He's He's a lot tougher to fool than a five-year-old buck. Uh, so that's, that's the mission for this evening. I'm excited about getting back out again. Uh, I will shoot some does given the opportunity tonight, but the real goal now uh, for the next few weeks until something changes is to try to kill this big seven right up here by the house where the deer's living. Got about an hour left. It's going to be a, a dark uh, kind of evening here, heavy overcast. It did spit rain a couple of times, but it hasn't really come down too much since we got in the blind. I doubt whether I'm going to have a full hour of hunting time just because of the camera light. We always have to quit a little bit early on these dark days because we can't film clear up to the end of legal shooting time. There's been a lot of deer uh, in this little plot. When we first got here, there was uh, three bucks and a doe, which we couldn't get on camera. Uh, not a shooter, but the one was a nice three-year-old, uh, cool-looking deer. They ran off, of course. Uh, and since then, we've had a lot of does and fawns come in, a couple of small bucks. Just had a small buck rubbing a tree on the other end of the plot just a couple minutes ago. So there's still plenty of time uh, you know, for the buck that I'm hunting to pop in here. I'm, I'm thinking that this last hour should be the best part of the of the day but uh 
One thing we've noticed, and this is something that you're really going to see when you hunt these small plots like this, especially when it's early season and there's leaves on the trees, when the wind gusts, it swirls. It's sort of like how the wind swirls inside of a football stadium. You know, this little food plot is like a deer hunting stadium. It's just circled up with trees on all sides and there's leaves on all the trees, so it creates a real good barrier for the wind. So you get the wind that blows over the top and it hits this little small pocket of protected airspace and swirls inside here. So we haven't really been getting busted. We got the Ozonics running and only one window open on the redneck blind. But we have had some deer get uneasy in here. Uh, they come out for a little while, feed, and then they sense something's not quite right and they drift off, uh, which is a little bit disappointing. But until the leaves come off these trees, we're going to have this kind of swirling back in, in these little pockets like this. It's just the way it is. You know, I'm excited about the next hour. You know, I'll, I'll come back in right at the very end and uh, wrap up the video blog for you and uh, maybe have some more stuff to show you in the meantime. See, there's a buck. Be careful. Straight across. Hit, hit the record button. There's a couple of them over there. Another one to his right, keep panning. There you go. They do look spooky. Yeah. I'm not sure what got her going. down to about the last 10 minutes here. Still having deer come out, but uh, they're uncomfortable with this blind. It's on a trailer, and I rolled it in here about four days ago. It was on a different part of the plot, just up by the entrance to the plot where I drive the equipment in and out when I plant this. And I pulled it down here and positioned it so all the deer are staring at it. So we don't really get away with very much yet. I mean, if they see the camera move or they see something move between windows in the blind, they're pretty skittish. Um, but I'm sure as the season goes on, they'll get more and more comfortable with it being here. Normally these trailer blinds, we can get away with a lot because they get used to it and being in one part of the plot or one, you know, one part of the, you know, the area that you're hunting. And then you move it and they don't pay that much attention to it after you move it. But this is a pretty dramatic move for them, uh, I'm sure, having to look at it every time they come out. But we haven't seen that buck that I was after, the big seven anyway. Uh, would have liked to have killed a couple of those does, or at least one of them. They never quite came close enough. They were always out there at 40 plus, and I don't know, I just haven't been shooting enough yet to get really comfortable with shots of that distance. I'm gonna get you know, log a lot more time on the range here as we get further and further into October so that, you know, I'm able to take advantage of those 40-yard shots. Well, that's it for tonight. Uh, if anything pops out here in the next 10 to 15 minutes, we'll show it to you at the end of the blog. Uh, otherwise, I don't believe I'm going to hunt tomorrow, but I'm sure I'll hunt a fair amount next week. We're supposed to get a lot of rain. Um, which is kind of a bummer because you can hear it probably now. It's starting to rain again. All we've had is rain the last few days. So if it does rain, I'll probably hunt some uh, inside the blinds, but uh, I'm not going to hunt a ton. So keep checking back on the video blogs, and hopefully we can catch up with this big seven here in the next uh, few days and, and have some fun showing you a video of that buck.